Hey, how you doing? It's so good to be a part of your day. So early. It is Tuesday, no longer Monday, so hopefully <laughs> that gets your day started on the right foot. Come on in here. I'm Lena DeFlorius, or am I? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Wearing Who's the same say? type of uh, color. I don't see it. I don't, go, guys. But, anyways, I'm Rashi Vats in for Sally McDonald. So, we jump into your headlines as you jump into your day. Where is the money going for the Hurricane Harvey bond project? This morning, we're finding out how city leaders plan to address flood control policies to fix the hardest hit neighborhoods. We have a big alert for you this morning concerning your taxes. The feds are warning of a new scam that's involving your Social Security cards. How to avoid becoming a victim straight ahead. An NFL free agency started yesterday, and it means your Houston Texans team going to look a little different next season. We're going to break that down in Wake Up Sports. <coughs> oh, no. I know. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. We sure Just are. Just a moment. We're losing some people. Hang We're on. getting some. I know. Yes. <laughs> no, you're going to stick around because you want to know what's going on with the weather because yes. every day it seems like things are a little bit wonky in some way. So we got Mike breaking it down for us. Hi there. Hi. Yeah, um, Rashi, we'll edit that out. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, Thank the, you. It's not live. We call it post. We'll edit that. Yeah. Out. Hey, uh, 501, good morning to you, everybody. It's a misty morning, and so what's that? I mean, it's kind of like between a fog and a drizzle. It's enough to make everything wet, but really not enough to be measured in a rain gauge. And so even though everything is wet, you don't you know, get a hundredth of an inch of rain or anything like that. Um, but that being said, it is going to get in your way this morning. We also do have a dense fog advisory right here just along coastal areas from Matagorda Bay up to Galveston Bay. The visibility in Houston varies a lot. To the north, it's fine. Uh, in the city right now on the southeast side, we do have some reduced visibility because of that uh, aforementioned mist. The temperatures this morning are a little bit cooler than yesterday, mostly because we've had an east wind kick in instead of a south and southeast wind, at least temporarily. Webster and League City in the middle 60s right now. In Houston, we're about 66 degrees in most locations. And up in the woodlands, it's also 66. Popular temperature there for Galveston as well. What I expect is that we're going to have increasing winds throughout the morning and then by midday and early afternoon, the breezes will be flowing in from the southeast, maybe 15 to 20 miles per hour. Bit of a windy day. By the way, it is warmest uh, down there in Matagorda County. Palacios and Bay City are in the low 70s. So here's today's outlook. A misty morning with some light drizzle possible. Uh, the windshield wipers will get some use this morning with some of the light drizzles around. Then as we transition to the late morning and early afternoon hours, like I mentioned, the wind picks up. We get a little bit breezier. I think we'll stay primarily cloudy today. Um, breezy but windy at times, you know, so definitely uh, hold on to your cowboy hat if you're headed out to the rodeo today. But the rain chances are fairly limited. Now, tomorrow, our rain chance does move way up, and that's as a result of a front that's coming our way. So, we're going to be talking about that and its impacts across the country actually coming up in just a few minutes. Here's our quick cast for the day today 65 at 7 a.m., about 68 at 10, and then rising into the middle and upper 70s this afternoon, reaching a max temperature around 79 or 80 degrees with those very breezy southeast winds. We'll check out the seven day forecast in just a few minutes. Here's Christiane. We've already got trouble happening on the roadway southbound 45, the North Freeway at Northern Railroad. This is just past Cross Timbers approaching 610 North Loop. We've got our Houston Transtar camera showing you traffic squeezing by the far left lane and the far right lane. So we are already going to start to see a buildup begin to occur on your main lanes. If you're looking for an alternate route, you can always take Bolton Street, which is closer to the neighborhood or just the Hardy Toll Road or East Tex Freeway. Then we do have another accident being reported. This one will be traveling outbound. 288 South at Reed. It's only on the far right shoulder, but watch out for emergency crews on the scene. And as Mike did mention, fog will be a factor if you are closer to Galveston, Tiki Island, making your way through Texas City, 45 the Gulf Freeway, 146 or Highway 6. Uh, keep in mind that you do want to leave early, slow down, and use those low beam headlights. Rashi and Lena. Four minutes after the hour, and just last night, Harris County leaders were meeting to talk to people who live in Houston about your concerns, including the bond project and uh, recovery from Hurricane Harvey, and which areas are going to see the improvements and when they'll see them. Fox 26's Lindsay Henry joining us live from Commissioner's Court, discussing the latest on last night's panel and what's going to happen this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. What you need to know is that this morning at 10 a.m., the commissioner's court will meet to discuss this flood bond issue yet again. It's a big concern for voters. They want to know what's going to happen with it, what areas are going to get uh, treated first. Uh, but they wanted to confirm to folks that it's not income based. It's which areas were hit hardest. 
Now, at last night's uh, meeting, 75 people met for a panel discussion, which was hosted by the Republican organization, the Lake Houston Paco Durham Club. Now, the meeting was essentially a Q&A with local flood representatives uh, so that folks could get their questions answered. Last summer alone, the Harris County Flood Control District hosted about 23 of these meetings discussing the bond and other projects. Deputy Executive Director Matt Zeev and representatives from the San Jack River Authority and Congressman Dan Crenshaw's office all addressed growing concerns uh, from the crowd, a majority of whom live in that Kingwood area, one of the worst areas hit during Hurricane Harvey. Ultimately, Harris County flood control leaders want people to rest assured that every project will get addressed. A lot of people are recovering from Hurricane Harvey, and they look at Harvey as the defining moment that, that this bond and the flood control district needs to address. We look at uh, drainage and flood, and flood damage reduction from decades-long perspective. Which parts of Harris County have, have flooded in the past? will continue to flood in the future. Some parts of Harris County, Harvey was the first time they ever flooded, and, and they, may be, they may never flood again unless we get something like Harvey again. But there are parts of Harris County that flood all the time. They flood every other year. We want to work on those parts of Harris County to uh, improve their drainage level of service so that every time it rains, uh, they're not worried about uh, a possible flood event in their neighborhood. Again, this is something that will be discussed at the Commissioner's Court at 10 a.m. off Preston Street. Live in downtown Houston, Lindsay Henry, Fox 26 News. We have an update to a story that we brought you all morning on Wake Up. A teen could face charges after her three-year-old relative died in an apartment fire early yesterday morning. Now, she was babysitting that toddler and told investigators she left Giovanni Lyles asleep and alone. And when she came back to the apartment on Sierra Blanca, that apartment was on fire. The toddler died, as we reported to you yesterday. The 19-year-old was treated for smoke inhalation. And investigators say that fire started in the kitchen. They know that, but they are investigating the exact cause of the fire. They're also investigating how how long that toddler was left alone. Seven minutes after the hour, time for your Tuesday tax tip. The Fed say be on the lookout for scammers telling you that your social security number and your card has been suspended. Yeah, victims are told they need to provide personal information to the caller in order to reactivate their accounts. And in some cases, the caller even threatens the victim with arrest if they don't comply. The information is then used for identity theft or to steal tax refunds. Sheriff's deputies are looking for two armed robbers who shot and killed a gas station clerk in Northwest Harris County. Two men armed with guns right there. You see them shot and killed the clerk. This is at the Shell Station on FM 1960 in Perry on Friday night. And deputies say one of them could be connected to as many as 10 other armed robberies. It's a sad day in the city of Houston and unincorporated Harris County <clears throat> when somebody that's responsible to hold a job goes to work to support their family and uh, their, their family and loved ones are left with a, uh, a life-lasting uh, memory of their loved one not coming back. Now, deputies say the man you see right there wearing that blue hoodie, it has the word Navy printed on the front and the back, could be connected to as many as 10 armed robberies. If you maybe recognize these people, maybe you know something about this crime or the others, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number is 713-222-TIPS. A follow-up at this hour, a mother now charged the death of her five-year-old daughter. Andrea Webb now charged with injury to a child. That girl's body was found outside a southeast Houston apartment complex Saturday night. Officers say Webb first said the little girl had fallen, but her injuries were inconsistent with a fall. Well, Webb later admitting that she made the little girl sit against a wall for hours without a seat or any support and then hit her with a belt whenever she stopped sitting there. The girl's younger sibling has been taken into custody with Child Protective Services. The FAA says the Boeing 737 MAX 8 can still fly here in the United States, even though five other countries and multiple airlines have grounded flights of that jet model. The 737 MAX 8 has been involved in two crashes in the last five months. The latest crash happening on Sunday in Africa, killing everyone on board, including eight Americans. The plane was en route to Nairobi when it crashed just minutes after takeoff on Sunday. A witness says the aircraft had smoke coming from the rear before it plunged to the ground. The cockpit voice recorder and the black box have both been recovered from the wreckage. People from 35 countries were on board, including eight Americans.
And in October, another Boeing 737 MAX 8 crashed off the coast of Indonesia. Now, Boeing says there's no evidence that these two crashes are related in any way. At least 58 737 MAX 8 jets fly here in the United States at multiple airports, including right here in Houston. Fox 26 is John Donnelly reporting from Hobby Airport. Truth be told, most air travelers really don't think very much about what airplanes they're about to fly or have just flown. Um, no idea. Big one. Boeing. Something. <laughs> Boeing 737? I don't even look at the pamphlet. I don't even know. But with two deadly crashes involving the same version of the 737 in under six months, some passengers and flight crews are taking notice. Sunday, an Ethiopian Airlines plane crashed shortly after takeoff, killing 157 people. Six months before that, a Lion Air 737 MAX 8 crashed in Indonesia shortly after takeoff as well, killing all 189 people on board. China and Indonesia have grounded all 737 MAX 8s, as have a number of foreign-based carriers. But not all passengers here think that's necessary. That would be a lot of planes to ground. No, I think they should have a system in place to start checking all Looking for a So how do you tell if you've booked a flight on a 737 MAX 8? Airline websites do have the information about aircraft types, but it can be hard to find. Neither Southwest nor American have changed their rebooking fees. And even if you do rebook, airlines can swap out aircraft on short notice anyway. Well, I mean, planes are going to crash. I mean, no matter what, that, that comes up. Uh, I wouldn't be afraid to eat on them or fly them. I mean, it's just, if it's your number, your time to go, it's your time to go. <laughs> so how do you know if you are flying in one of these aircraft? Well, you can go to the airline's website or its app, and you can click on the flight number, and it should tell you what type of aircraft is assigned to it. You can go to the FAA's website, uh, then click on the registration number, and it should tell you also, again, if you're flying one of these aircraft, or there are a number of aviation apps up there that will tell you. The odds of you're flying in one of these aircraft are not really all that good. So far, only about 350 of them are airborne, and a lot of those are flying for foreign carriers. However, eventually, they do plan on ordering 5,000 of these aircraft. At Hobby Airport, John Donnelly, Fox 26 News. Question to you is, do you want to know? <laughs> Probably know before you go. We're still ahead on Wake Up. Take a look at this. Heavy winds completely blow off the roofing of this building, and it's all caught on video. More on these dangerous conditions in just a moment. And you've got more must-see video coming your way right after the break. Look at this. Yikes! Ugh.